Since the night was upon her, Vo decided once again to head over to the ghostly minstrel. This time, though, she came in as herself. Of course, she was still wearing the pin Talon had given her. She found herself a chair that was close to the stage and one which she could actually pick up, because this night she had a plan to join Talon on stage after a while. Talon started out his time with a juggling act, mixed with a rousing song stomping his foot. On the hollow stage, it reverberated like a deep drum. He snapped his fingers between balls in the air, and lights sparkled around the balls he juggled. After some time, Vo stood up and joined him on stage. She pulled out her horn and began to go along with the tune being played. Often she looked over to Talon to see what he was doing and to change up the beat or tune. The two of them put on quite a show, and the crowd was roused into hollering when the number was completed, and the two of them completed their act. Talon had a big grin on his face from the reaction, and the coins tossed up at the duo. Vo smiled back and then began a popular tune that most of the bards would know. It had the promise of riches and reputation. It started out slow, but then built the rhythm up to a crescendo in the middle, and then it continued on the roller coaster throughout the entire song. Talon accompanied her with his large-bodied guitar, both strumming along and drumming on the hollow body with thumping his foot for added percussion. Vo played with Talon for the whole night until people finally started to filter out. She helped gather the coins they earned and then headed upstairs with Talon for another fun-filled evening. In the morning when she awoke, Vo simply lay in bed with Talon. They didn't have anything pressing to do that day, so they just decided to take the day as it came. The duo managed to actually collect 10 gold pieces total of assorted coins for their night work. Morning dawned on the rainy day, large drops pelting against the window in a rat-tat-tat pattern. The rainy day made it even less appealing for the duo to get out of bed, but the smell of breakfast wafting up from their room caused stomachs to grumble. Vo looked over to Talon and said, Well, love, what do you think about having some breakfast? I need a little nourishment out of after our dalliances last night. I also finished my little mission I had, as you could possibly tell since I wasn't in disguise last night. Today I was actually going to talk with my adopted family. Have you heard of the Knights of the Cord? Talon chuckled and smiled. Of course I have. Every bard has. But I see no reason to join them. I'd rather forge my own path. What's your interest, my Moonbeam? Vo blushed a little and giggled at the reference to Moonbeam. Well, my adopted family is House Cath. They raised me and had me trained by the best musicians money could buy. I was a quick learner, and that pleased them naturally. I heard a rumor that House Cath was a staunch supporter of the Knights of the Cord, and I'd like to make a difference, so I thought I might try to join them. Oh, I see, said the blind man to the deaf-mute, who picked up his hammer and saw. <laughs> Talon chuckled at his own dad joke. Well, that makes a little bit more sense. House Cath, eh? But you don't carry their surname, do you? I've never noticed you use it. You're right. I don't normally say the last name, as I didn't want to attract too much attention to myself when I don't need to. I'd love to bring you along, Talon, if you would join me. Vo put on a puppy face with pouty eyes. The other bard hesitated a moment, but seeing the look on Vo's face, no man with blood in his veins could have resisted. All right, all right. I'm powerless to resist that look. Let me dress and prepare. Talon dressed in his nicest attire, but still donned his full leather armor and weapons. He made a few adjustments around the room, setting things just so. Then as they left, he used a cord looped through the handle and fed under the door to pull his harp case snug against the door as it closed. He pulled the cord out and stuck it into a pocket as he locked the door. One can never be too careful. He flashed one of those smiles and gestured for Vo to lead on. Vo couldn't hold back her excitement when Talon accepted her request. Oh, goody, I will make it worth your while this evening, she said playfully. Vo was quite impressed with the precautions Talon has used while he was absent from his room. It showed her a lot about his style, and she liked it. She led him down to the dining room and picked a good seat for both of them. After eating and pleasant, playful talk, Vo paid for the meal and then led him to House Cath. Known as the Nobles District by those who don't live there, and the Nobles' Quarters by those who do, the district actually resided on a clifftop in the westernmost part of Tolis. One cannot mistake the fact that the upper classes of Tolis dwell there, because if for no other reason, the district literally rises high above the rest of the city. The cliffs restrict the approach to the Nobles' Quarters, and commoners without actual business in the district aren't even permitted to enter. Unless one is flying, there's only one way into the nobles' quarters. That's passing from Old Town through the ancient fortress of Dalengard. You have to go up a winding road carved in the jewels' cliffs, and then travelers walked through a tall stone arch. 
into the most luxurious part of town. A large district, the nobles' quarters had bigger and much more expensive buildings than other parts of the city. Most of the noble estates, for example, each commanded a large amount of acreage with lush green lawns and extensive gardens. The smell of blooming flowers, well-prepared food, and perfumed flesh waft delicately throughout the quarter. Buildings are obviously cleaner and better maintained here than anywhere else in the city, and one can see a greater effort paid to incorporating trees, bushes, and other plants, particularly ivy, in the landscape. Even the streets themselves differed from those of the rest of the city. Here they were cleaner, wider, and paved with large square stones rather than small cobblestones. The local architecture varied greatly, including towers, circular buildings, and large edifices with multiple wings, marble columns, and tall windows. Many homes had vast open courtyards or grassy lawns. Botanical and statuary gardens were commonplace, as were fountains. Magically maintained street lamps lit the way at night. Opulence was the order of the day. Most city residents went their entire lives without ever even visiting the noble quarters. Rumors of his extravagance generate not just a little bit resentment among the middle and lower classes. And generally speaking, those who lived in the nobles' quarters were both arrogant and ignorant about the rest of the city. Vaux and Talon were stopped at the Dalengard Castle entrance. The guards quickly checked their papers and allowed them entry without further harassment. Vaux took her time walking down Three Princes Street, then made a left onto Grove Street. She had been gone a long time. The opulence was so far beyond what she had been around for the past year. The beautiful people and the bountiful riches to be found here were a fresh reminder of her upbringing, and in stark contrast to her, to her travels. The Cath Estate ran the full length of Grove Street. She had been gone a long time, but she still remembered the beautiful, beautiful Cath Estates. The duo made their way to the entrance, and they were, once again, allowed passage. The current guards didn't remember her, but Vaux's papers were clear enough. With a look of awe on his face and a constantly slack jaw, Talon looked around, trying to take in everything he could see. I've never even been in the Nobles District. My whole life I've never been up here. I cannot believe it. One day I thought I might play up here? If I gathered enough fans, maybe even for a noble house patron, but this is unbelievable. Vo, you grew up here? Talon asked. Vo had taken her time walking to the Cath Estate, her home. A lot of things had changed since her absence. Things were even more opulent than she remembered them being. When she finally got onto Grove Street, she felt right at home. She spent many days running and playing down the street in her early childhood years. She was shaken from her memories as Talon began to speak, though, and she looked at him, appreciating his company at this time. Yes, indeed, this is where I grew up. I was just reminiscing about running up and down these streets as a kid. You know, I'm very happy you decided to come with me. As she said the last, she grabbed his hand and held it tight. As Vo approached the entrance to the estate, she didn't knock, but said a simple arcane word, and the doors opened upon hearing her voice to allow them entrance into the home. Welcome home, Vo. It's been a long time since the door chimes called out as Volan led Talon and herself inside. It didn't take long before a servant greeted the two in the entranceway. The servant was one that had been there for quite a while and recognized Vo right away. Madam Vo, you've returned, I see. It is so good to see you. Would you like to see your mother? She's in the music hall finishing up a piece she's writing. Vo looked at the older woman and smiled. Yes, I would very much like to see her. By the way, Matilda, this is Talon. I'm certain Mother will love him. Take us to her, will you please? The arresting Selina sat, eyes closed at the head of the music hall. Her nubile fingers coaxed out note after note from an onyx black piano setting center stage. The music floated through the hall and stopped the doer in the tracks. The breathtaking woman had her long golden braid tossed over her shoulder. It flew as she tossed her head back, reaching a climaxing crescendo, then draped it down her back as she lulled forward following the music's retardando. Her fingers stroked across the ivory, each leaving the key with a gentle caress as she finished out the melody. One foot on the sustained pedal, she kept her eyes closed, listening for the last echoes of the final notes to fade away. Talon applauded lightly, just his fingertips tapping against his palm, mouth wide open. 
Selena looked up slowly and her eyes grew ever wider as she took in the form of her adopted daughter. Never one to be less than stately, she rose from the padded bench and verily floated toward the duo. She embraced Vo tightly, then held her at arm's length. My daughter, my daughter, how fair you are to see, and I hope you fare well. It has been too long since you've been in House Cath, and I'm so pleased you've returned. Vo's adopted mother embraced her once more, then politely extended her hand to greet Talon. And who might this young man be? Vo made polite introductions, then Selina ushered them to move on. Come, come, there's no sense spending more time in here. My peace must, must wait. We will take refreshments on the divan. She floated out of the room with the duo in tow and informed the nearest servant to have drinks and nibbles brought to the divan. She swept down the hallway and out onto the west-facing balcony overlooking all of the Cath lands. The stream that ran the interior of the state was just below them. Then the jeweled cliffs dropped away to reveal the original Tolis, which was now named Old Town, with its beautiful buildings. They could see across the entire city as each area descended until the ocean water ran off into the horizon. Talon had never seen the city from this angle. It had been such a beauty to behold both in city and company. He could not keep his slack jaw closed, but stood agape at the wealth around him and all that extended below. My child, tell me of your travels. I'm so glad you've returned. What finally turned your road back toward home? Vo had watched as her mother played the piano. Oh, what memories it brought back to her in her younger years. She remembered sitting on her mother's lap as she taught some of the skills to playing the ivory keys. The piano was a beautiful instrument, but not practical on a traveling road. When her mom finished playing, Talon had given a light clap. She glanced over to him and saw the awe in his eyes. Vo wondered if this was all too much for him to take in. She knew a little about him, but nothing of his childhood or how he grew up. She would find out, though, in due time. She was falling for the man standing beside her, her feelings swelling ever deeper every day. When her mother came over and introductions were out of the way, Vo followed her mother to the divan where they awaited some tea and small cakes. Sitting on the divan next to her mother and close to Talon, she responded to the questions at hand. What did bring her back? She herself didn't really know, to be honest. Something had pulled her back subconsciously. Vo relayed her travels and the sights she saw and things she did. Some of it she hadn't even shared with Talon, so he was learning more about her as well. Well, Mom, I'm not sure what brought me back, she said. I just knew it was time for me to come home. How is everything here? Is everyone okay? I'd love to see my brother. Is he in? I want to introduce Talon to him and see what he thinks. She looked over at Talon and then smiled, a twinkle in her eye, and she told Selena, He is someone that I've spent a lot of time with lately. I've known him before. When I would sneak out at night and go to the ghostly minstrel, I would see him perform. He is quite the talent in music too, Mother. I think I may be falling for him. There it was. The cat was out of the bag. She looked deeply into Talon's eyes to see what reaction he might have to the news. Talon blanched at the sudden and powerful remark. He smiled back at Vo and then at her mother and said he felt quite the same. It's all overwhelming to be here. My entire life I've heard the wonders of the Cath family, but to see it firsthand is simply wonderful. He lightly sipped his tea with a smile on his face. Selena smiled back. Regardless of your reasons, it's wonderful to have you home. Your travels seem extensive. I look forward to seeing them regaled through a piece you create. Vo then asked, so tell me, mother, what is Raul up to these days? Is he here? Vo asked after a nibble on a cake and a brushing of the crumbs that fell to her leg. Vo did feel a bit out of sorts with the way she was dressed, but that would change soon enough. She was certain her mother had some clothing that she could wear. They were about the same size now, after all. Oh, he is doing quite well for himself, Selena answered. He's written and performed many wonderful pieces. The conservatory is always packed when his name is on the bill. He might be in the house. I'm, I'm actually not certain. Vo smiled at her mom. Well, we'll see him sometime, I'm sure. Is my room still available? I'd like to show it to Taylor if that's okay, and when would be dinner? Oh, yes, it is. However, I do have a favor to ask of you. I was going to hire someone to handle this for me, but perhaps the two of you would like a chance to earn some extra coin and have a little adventure. Selena raised one of her blonde eyebrows on the side of her mouth in a smile. One of the newest gems that we have is an opera singer. Ilsendrin Leitsky is a young woman that a scout found for us performing at inns for pennies. She's attracted some crazy fan who's been pestering her, and as she's spurned his advances, he's become more and more of a problem. House Cath wants their investment protected, and I don't want to pull a Knight of the Court away for this task. You could visit the conservatory and enjoy the shows while making sure young Lightski remains protected until this dredge is dealt with. If something were to happen to him under your watch, you need not fear any reprisals. Simply keep it discreet. 
Selena raised both her eyebrows in a question to see how the duo felt about the potential task. When her mother had asked her and Taylin to do the job for her concerning a talent that was under the care of House Kath, Vo was excited. It certainly had been a while since she was at the conservatory, and she would love to watch some performances there again. She looked over to Taylin, judging his reaction and hoping this would be something he would be interested in as well. I'd love to do this for you, Mom. Taylin, would you like to accompany me to the conservatory? It seems we have a job. The excitement not only in her voice, but in her looks could be seen a mile away. Of course. I haven't had the coin to attend in quite some time. I'd love to see some of the performances. And gold is always good. He smiled at both ladies and took another sip of his drink. Need we leave immediately, or might we remain a night? Your home is breathtaking, and I would love Vo to give me a tour of where she grew up. Oh, of course you can remain this evening. We'll have dinner tonight at 7. I'll send a courier to inform Is- 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 Ilsandrin you will see her tomorrow. I'll also have a carriage prepared for you in the morning for whenever you're ready to go. Selena stood and smiled to both the bards. I have some matters to attend. I'll see you in just a little while. It's good to have you home, well, Vo. With that, she stepped away. Taylor had exception, which was good, and he wanted her to show him her home. Another good sign indeed. Vo smiled at her mother as she left the room. I love you, she called out just before Selena left. So, you want to see the place? I'd love to show it all to you. Are you ready? Vo asked with a smirk on her face. She leaned in and gave Taylor a light kiss. She took him first to the dance room. She talked about her first dance, and even at one point she began to hum a song she remembered hearing quite often in the place. The house tour was completed at Vo's old room. She swung the door open and saw everything clean and remained exactly as she had left it. The tour around the house and the stories she shared with Talon were fun, and it seemed he enjoyed them as well. They didn't run into her brother, though. It didn't matter much, though, for certainly he would be at dinner, and then she could introduce Talon to him at that point. When Vo opened her room, she looked inside to find it just the way she had left it. It was a decent-sized room with a window that looked out into the gardens. Just outside her window to the side was a huge oak tree. It was one she used to climb down to get into the city. Well, this is my room. Fast forward to dinner time. Once it was time for dinner, the servant came to the door and knocked, calling time for dinner, Milady Vo. Vo knew the servant wouldn't come in, but she still tossed the covers up and over her body as she lay next to Talon. I guess we should get dressed and head to dinner. We can freshen up in my private bath before we go. Once finished, she put on her clothes again, and not some of her best ones in the closet. Since Talon didn't have anything new or fresh to wear, it seemed only right to her that she should dress the same so that he didn't stand out. Talon dressed and composed himself, soothing the fabric of his clothing and wetting his crop of hair to tame it. They made their way downstairs to the grand dining hall. Vo was delighted to see the room again and smell the succulent smells of a calf-prepared feast. She was disappointed to see hardly any members of her family present, and especially sad to see the absence of her adopted brother, Raoul. Her mother was there, along with a few cousins, but no one she really knew well or even missed. The servants brought the meal courses one by one until the delectable chocolate dessert was quite literally had the cherry on top. Vo ate and talked throughout the whole dinner. It was good showing off Talon and letting him get to know her a little better as seen through the eyes of others. There was more than one story of Vo and something she foolishly did when she was a young lassie. Vo asked more about this new protege that they would be seeing tomorrow. Other than that, it was simply a wonderful evening. At one point after the main meal was served and between dessert, she pulled Talon from the table and had him sing a song they had sung together in the minstrel. It was a happy song and one that had her cousins laughing and clapping along as well. Finally, it was time to retire to bed and it seemed to her that Talon was a little more loving than he had been before. This made her simply happy inside, and they fell asleep in each other's arms. The, vo- the song was well received by the table of Kath family members, who all simply focused on the arts. Vo's mother handed her an unsealed envelope, which contained a paper with the performer's name on it, a brief physical description, and the address of an apartment near the Cloud Theater where the Caths were paying for her to live. She also dropped two platinum coins into Vo's hand and kissed her cheek before sweeping away out of the dining room. Vo and Talon retired to their bedchambers. The morning dawned another rainy one. Not just the typical tollest drizzle, but a real pisser. They opted to sleep in a bit longer as the sounds of the rain falling outside, then they finally dressed and headed down to enjoy breakfast. They ate alone and in a much smaller dining area that overlooked the gardens currently being watered by the heavens. The stream, whose waters magically flowed around the entire estate, was slowly rising with the added rain. The duo was especially appreciative of the hired coach waiting outside to carry them down into the main city. They would not walk in the downpour the whole way. The coach rumbled a wave on the paved road. 
out the Cath Estate entrances. The gates were pulled open by the house guards, and then they went down the wide stone streets that only the nobles' quarter possessed. Very few others walked occupying the lanes that day, but several other coaches were out. All had their windows covered or closed to keep out the precipitation and maintain their wealthy patrons being dry. The gates were open and the guards waved them through and from an open window in their covered building. They descended through the ancient Dalengard castle. Even the castle gate guards left the portcullis and doors open, watching them pass through. Their carriage driver took it slow and easing, making the ride a very comfortable affair. He made a straight shot down Dalengard Road, taking his time and slowing the horses while descending the hill into the South Market area until finally turning onto Dragon Street in Midtown. The Cloud Theater was here, but he passed it by and proceeded down a much narrower street which allowed the coach, but no one else would have been able to pass. Thankfully, the lone person walking stepped aside with their cloak pulled tight around them and the hood pulled low, keeping the rain off. The driver slowed politely so as not to splash them and proceeded a short way down the lane. The horses' hooves echoed off the close walls of the building until they halted before a three-story building with steps leading up to a single door. He hollered down that they were here and pointed to the apartment just outside the coach's right door. The driver descended and opened the carriage door, his own cloak tight around him and hood pulled. The water dripped off him and droplets fell from the front of his extended cloak hood to join their brothers and sisters in a rush down the streets and into the sewers. Having kept the windows closed and the carriage to keep the rain out, Vo just sat and enjoyed the company of Talon. The ride was simple and easy as they went. The driver seemed to know exactly where best to put the wheels to the brick cobblestone roads and avoid deeper cracks. When the carriage stopped and the driver dismounted and opened the door, Vo pulled up the hood of her cloak and stepped out into the rain. Her belongings were kept dry by her pack and the cloak. The driver pointed to the apartment and then returned to the top of the coach and waited for the two to enter the building before heading off. Vo walked to the door and knocked loudly with a supple leather gloved hand. This ends chapter one, part six of the Tales Under the Spire, a story about all things in Tolis. This comes from our play-by-post campaign, which you can actually read if you look down to the description below. There's links to all of those that we've posted. If you haven't listened to or watched the other posts, I've already posted other videos in this series. I hope that you get to check those out. If you're feeling extremely generous, I've also got a link to my Patreon channel. If you're really interested in Tolis, check out my ptol.us website. And we have a Tolis-specific Discord channel which is wonderful fantastic other creators in there great narrators and just people constantly sharing their ideas and if you haven't checked it out net yet make sure you check out our homebrew section if you're on the website you can go to dm reference and then click on homebrew i'm constantly adding cool new stuff to there new locations new npcs plot hooks and everything until next time stay out of the shadow of the spire